For once, I did remember to turn on my microphone. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cubone. My name is Quentin. Today is another Helldivers Tuesday. It is five, uh, it is, pardon me, May 7th, 2024. A lot has happened over the last week. Namely, of course, was the push from Sony to have Steam players register with the PlayStation Network. While, of course, on Sunday they did withdraw this decision, it still did cause a large uproar. Thankfully, not too much of the community has actually left permanently. Uh, looking at the Steam DB numbers, it is, despite the downward trend, that has it is consistent with games generally. After the push from Sony, there actually has not been a significant dip that we wouldn't otherwise expect. That said, we do have other news to go over, including a new major order and new patch notes. So without further ado, we'll get into those. Starting as always with last Tuesday, quite simply, it showed us taking to the major order to turn off the TCS with gusto. So much that we ignored several attacks on previously liberated planets, Krimzika and Estanu. By Wednesday morning, we in quick succession lost Estanu and completed the objective on Fenrir 3, the first of the three planets to have the TCS officially turned off. Divers quickly moved on to Turing, none eager to return to Irata Prime. By noon, a new defense for Oshune had begun, and with less than 10,000 divers attending to it, it began to fall. This major order was certainly undoing a lot of the hard work we'd done securing the bug front. Turing was being completely completed rather very gradually at nearly 2% per hour by Tuesday night, leaving us with three days to finish both it and Irata Prime. Through Wednesday, much remained the same, the defense inevitably being lost as we continued pushing the major order. Not much else to report through Wednesday or Thursday as we continued deactivating the TCS, though Penta did come under attack on the bot front. While the bots are holding steady, they don't pose as much of a threat as the bugs do, who continued to push us out of our planets as we prevented a catastrophe. Friday showed a horrible development occur, as many of you are already aware. In-game, Turing was completed in the early morning, with Errata Prime rising to 23% by the evening, giving us well over a day to complete it. However, Fori Prime came under attack, and upon losing that, we had no control, we rather did control no planets outside of the Umlau sector. A new Warbond trailer came out on Friday for the Polar Patriots, which will be releasing May 9th and will be getting its own video Saturday, May 11th. The biggest thing, however, was the announcement that Steam players would be required to link a PSN account or be kicked from the game. This has made a lot of people very angry and has been widely regarded as a bad move. I have already made a dedicated video to the topic uh, before the announcement that they would be going back on it, so please do go check that out on my channel. Saturday, Fori Prime fell to the Terminate Scourge, kicking us from the last of our outposts. This forced us to fight through Hellmire to regain a foothold. However, first and foremost, divers buckle down to take back Astanu and deactivate the TCS. Errata Prime, not Astanu. An important step in Liberty's march through the bug's fascism. Nearly 75% of remaining Helldivers joined forces to complete the Major Order. In the early hours of Sunday, their efforts paid off. With the Major Order's completion, a new defense began. The bots thought an opportunity had arisen. But between our already diminished numbers and the amassing of forces on Errata Prime, bots launched an attack on Lasoth. But the divers were quick to respond. By midday, nearly 40,000 divers were fighting to hold the planet and, with gusto, had fought the toasters back by day's end. I didn't even realize I used with gusto twice in this week's notes. Uh, Monday morning, a very important development occurred as... Uh, pardon me, this was Sunday. A development occurred as Sony released an announcement that they would not be moving forward with mandatory PSN leaking. Linking. Fuck me. A decision that hopefully has not come too little too late. However, on Monday morning, we were going to need as many forces as possible for the next major order. 
The Meridian Super Colony has caused breakouts on all nearby planets. Heath Angels Venture and Veld in the Orion Sector, as well as Akmar 4 in the Jinzi Sector. I hope that is how that is pronounced. Uh, while we were too late to stop the spread, we have caught it at Akamar 4's sister planet, Pandion 24. Though with divers rightfully focused on stopping the spread towards Super Earth, we unfortunately were not able to complete that defense. However, now that we know the far reaches of this infestation, we'll be able to stop it without any much trouble. As of Monday night, the Major Order was going well, with Keith already at 69% liberated, Angel's Venture and Veld trailing behind at 34% and 28% respectively, and Akamar 4 holding a distant 4th place at 5%. Through Tuesday, we did, of course, lose Pandion 24, but it is all for the greater good of liberty, as by the time of the stream, we will have liberated Heath. And that is true, of course, as around 3 o'clock Mountain Daylight Time, we did complete the liberation of Heath. Quick update, as of editing this video, Angel's Venture has also been completed, though Veld and Akamar 4 are both still at 0%. Hopefully, that will change soon. And the current Major Order currently sits with Angel's Venture at a cool 17%, Veld at unfortunately 0%. Uh, Pandion 24 at 29% and Akamar 4 at 0%. Unfortunately, we do not have enough divers on these planets to counter the decay rate. Angel's Venture is sitting at 48,337 hell divers, meaning that we are currently on a decline rate of 0.58% per hour, meaning that within one day and six hours, Angel's Venture will be back down to 0%. Get on to Angel's Venture and let's... Intro oh, it just updated. Now we have raised the rate to 0.17% per hour. I kid you not, it updated while I was looking at it. I should have had it pulled up on screen. As for the bot front, pretty much the same story. We don't have enough excess hell divers to make any progress there, so all of the planets are currently stagnating. Until we get a new defense campaign, we'll not really know how that's going to go. But we do have some new patch notes. Beginning with a democratic day to you, hell divers and citizens. Today we bring you yet another patch addressing various freedom hampering issues. So the weekly patch did surprisingly have some big changes, including some weapon and enemy balancing, crash fixes, social menu issues, damage over time fix, misaligned scopes fix, general fixes and improvements. I don't have a lot to say about this patch. A lot of it is general stuff. The main things I want to cover are the balancing of weapons. The R9 Eruptor has had an increase to its explosive damage by 40 damage. However, they did remove shrapnel from the explosion. The reasoning they gave is to avoid cases in which players would randomly one-shot themselves or their teammates in a huge radius around the explosion. However, this increased damage is still good. We knew this was coming. Uh, but the nerf last week left the boor weapon borderline useless. We'll see if the 40 extra damage can actually make a significant difference in the usage of this weapon. I haven't had time to test it myself, but I will try to get something done with that. For enemies, the Shrieker Sight and Hearing has had their range increased slightly. They say slightly. In the little bit of testing I've done, they uh, they notice you long before you notice them. That said, the gunships have also had their hearing range increased. I have not played against gunships in quite a while, so I haven't noticed. I don't know really how necessary either of these changes were, as the two enemies already seem to be quite frustrating to deal with on a regular basis, so having them detect you more easily could just be another step to solo players being nerfed something that has been a genuine problem since last week's patch. For the general fixes, the only ones I want to cover are that they have fixed issues with the way damage over time effects were being applied. As they say, this should fix issues where only the network session owner could apply them and other cases where they would be applied inconsistently. So, primary thing to be noted with this is that fire is now working as intended for the most part. So primarily, the fire damage was not working for anybody who wasn't the host, so it was completely useless. This meant things like the thermite grenades and most importantly the flamethrower were just not used. But now that that has been fixed, the flamethrower is once again an incredibly viable weapon. The thermite grenade I'm not certain of yet. I plan on testing that tonight at some point. 
The other fixes I would like to cover, uh, the sound when stimming no longer plays while being interrupted. This was a major problem where you would begin stimming, you would get hit, and you would think that you were healing when you in fact weren't. It got me killed plenty of times. The major orders with the kill task now track score correctly. Previously, it counted the entire squad's kills once for each player, meaning it would multiply the score by the number of people on the mission. This is now amended, meaning most likely, we did not kill 2 billion bugs, we only killed 500,000. Maybe that's why the order was done so quickly. Now the next time we get a major order like that, it should be significantly harder. The rest of the changes and fixes will be on screen, I'll scroll through them quite quickly, but these were the biggest ones to discuss, namely the damage over time effects. For weeks now, I've avoided using fire weapons because they were completely useless. Now that the issue has been resolved, it's time to return to the battlefield with my trusty flamethrower and wreak sweet destructive liberty on all the bugs that thought they had an upper hand. This was a very minor set of patch notes, but a positive one nonetheless. General bug fixes are always appreciated, and the buff to the R9 was one of my biggest issues last week. The fix to the damage over time is icing on the cake, and honestly, we couldn't deal with any negative patches this week. I'm thankful that the account linking update didn't majorly affect the game's player count, but we have still seen a general downward trend ever since the launch of the game. The last big jump we had was when the automatons were thought to be eradicated back at the beginning of April, but since then we've seen a continuous drop in player count. The new major order is a good one, but it's not enough to keep the player base alive at this rate. Here's hoping that they have something big planned for the rest of May. I'd like to point out what I mean with the player count as it says there are only 51,000 players on Steam right now, and the overall player count appears to be about 90,000. As you can see, this is the release, and we had a general upward trend, and then a general downward trend since the release, with the biggest one coming Sunday, April 7th. This was the point where we cleared the last planet on the original automaton front. So we had a big boost there, even then it didn't even reach March's peak, and now we're sitting about here-ish, where even with the Sony announcement, it was at a over 100,000, and it's maintained that. We had a little bit of a boost when they announced that they were reverting it, and it's gone back down again. My point is that it's not really that new. Obviously, it's very good that they reverted it, but it doesn't seem to have affected the player counts in a significant manner. Here's hoping that now that we've seen them willing to change their plan for the sake of players that we'll see a bit of a boost and here's hoping that the developers uh and damn joel can bring something into the gaming sphere to bring divers back in like we had with the reclamation and uh, operation swift disassembly so as for the patch notes, these are the rest of the fixes. I'm gonna leave them up for just a moment so you guys can look through them. There's not really any big ones. I am a bit baffled by in the crash section, fix the crash that could occur when all players were dead on the deactivate TCS mission. Those missions are no longer a thing. So this crash is not, shouldn't affect anything. Overall, small patch notes that are still worth noting. That is all I have for the news segment for today. I'm gonna go ahead and throw us back to the Helldiver start screen and prepare for the actual stream, get my air conditioner thrown back in. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I think we're in a good place right now with a good major order, some good patches, and I do truly hope that we can see the game start to flourish again because I'm still having fun and I'm glad that I don't have to feel bad about it now. That's a horrible way to put it. I, I had to genuinely consider if I was gonna continue covering the game because if more than half of the player base was no longer playing, it wouldn't have felt right. And frankly, it wouldn't have been very good for the channel if I'm being selfish. But the real reason genuinely is if all of us can't dive, none of us will dive. I'm glad it got refuted. The refute is not really the right word. Undone. And I'm glad that hopefully we can all dive together again. For now, we have a major order to complete. Get on the game. Let's get going. And I'll see you guys in just a moment.